Hey guys, it's Kat and I am back today with another foundation wear test. I did one of these last week. I tested out the Colt uh, Giorgio Armani Luminous uh, Silk, is that what it's called? Luminous Silk, yeah, foundation. And um, I really liked that a foundation. Probably not enough to spend my hard earned 105 Australian dollars on, um, but I really liked the effect of it. It was nice and glowy. It lasted quite nicely on my oily skin. And so I thought, look, I want to try a few more foundations that I have waiting for me to try. I did go to an event about a month ago um, and I picked up this Max Factor Miracle Pure Skin Improving Foundation. It's supposed to have 24 hour hydration. It's got hyaluronic acid, vitamin C and SPF 30, which is great. So I thought while I have the expectations of luminous silk in my head, not that this claims to be a dupe for it at all, um, but I thought it's a good time to do another sort of lower coverage, dewier foundation wear test because I can sort of have luminous silk as the bar that's set and I can sort of compare and contrast this to that. So I will link that review in the description box down below, but normally how I like to do these reviews, I'm gonna tell you about my skin type, I'm gonna tell you about the climate today because it does change how foundations wear. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the claims of this foundation and the information, just general information about it. Then I'll show you me applying it half sponge, half brush, um, and I will check back probably for around 12 hours throughout the day and then conclude what I think about it for my skin. So with my skin, I am 36 years old, so I do have some fine lines and stuff going on, um, but my main two sort of challenges when it comes to base products is I have a lot of redness in my face, especially today. I think it's been the air, like the heaters that have been on the last couple of days because it's been really cold. Um, so I've got a lot of red flush in my face. I like to even out. I've also got some little breakouts going on here. So you'll see how this foundation covers it. So I need a little bit of coverage or like medium coverage to sort of tackle those issues. But I do still like things looking not too cakey and not too full coverage. I like them looking sort of evened out, but uh, sort of natural. My other issue is that I have oily combination skin. So my T-zone, especially around my nose, on my chin, breaks down makeup like nobody's business. Um, the sides of my face are quite normal skin. So I have oily combination skin. So Max Factor was in Australia for a long time and then they sort of pulled the majority of the range, only left a few things, and they've come back with quite a few products um, to sort of revamp themselves into the market. Um, you can buy Max Factor at Priceline in Australia and also at Big W. Now this foundation is just under 40 Australian dollars for uh, 30 mils, yeah, 30 mils, uh, which is quite a lot for a drugstore foundation. It's definitely a higher priced drugstore foundation, but Max Factor always has been in that sort of price range. But since you can buy it at Priceline and Big W, it means you can often find it on sale. And at the moment at Big W, this is half price um, as of filming this. So you can always wait for like 30, 40, 50% off sales if you're patient enough. Now they do say this comes in 20 shades. My shade is 75 golden. I did get color matched at an event about a month ago. I do think this is a little bit dark for me, but it, it's fine. It's close enough to work. Um, I've looked online. It seems like Priceline and Big W are only stocking 15 shades. So I don't know if in store they're stocking more and if online there's limited or if 15 shades has only come to Australia, but the full range is technically 20 shades. So the claims of this foundation are, uh, it pretty much says it's a new Miracle Pure foundation that's clinically proven to care for skin while you wear it. In just one minute and with just one drop, it plumps your skin, letting your complexion benefit in five ways with improved radiance, firmness, elasticity, density, and suppleness. The advanced formula is infused with 89% skincare ingredients, including collagen boosting complex, vitamin C and hyaluronic acid. It's clinically proven to provide you with 24 hours of hydration. Um, it will instantly plump and improve skin's firmness and elasticity day by day. It's available in 20 medium coverage buildable shades, SPF 30, UVA, UVB protection, and it's dermatologically tested. So just to summarize all that, uh, it's supposed to be a really skincare focused foundation. It's supposed to have 24 hours hydration, medium coverage, and the back also says a radiant finish. Those claims sound great. On oily skin, there's a, a few red flags that it probably won't last on my skin, but 
we'll see throughout the day. So let's get on to me applying it. All right, it's just after nine. So let's say I've started this at around nine o'clock. Um, as per my last review, I kept the things the same. I did have shower, so my hair's wet, but I used my vitamin C serum from Bondi Sands, which for people asking, it's all right. I don't love vitamin C serum. It can aggravate my skin. It's looking quite flushed and annoyed today, but I think that's because I've had the heater on a lot. It's really, really rainy. Um, and I'm using my ultraviolet queen screen SPF and it's been on for about 20 minutes. This has a really handy tube, so you can actually just squeeze out a little bit. Like it can be quite precise with how much you're squeezing out. It is a thick ish foundation, like thicker than I sort of thought it'd be, but that doesn't move at all. So it's fairly thick. I'm going to use a damp Ella cosmetic sponge for half my face and then a brush for the other half. So let's use some now. Let's just go in. This has a lighter coverage, but it's got a lot to cover today. So this is covering my general redness really nicely, just with one sort of layer. Um, it's not a super, super thin layer. It's sort of um, just tapped on. This feels a lot like a thick moisturizer. This definitely has that sort of moisturizer consistency to it, um, which is quite nice, especially if you've got drier skin and you like a lot of moisture. Um, this, this sort of feels almost balmy. Just turn down the brightness a bit. You can see it's very shiny and wet looking. Like I've got the sunscreen that makes my skin look shiny anyway, but that is like glass shiny. So I'm definitely going to set this down. Um, but it's given, like it's covered a lot of the redness really well. What it's not covering is my little blemishes that I've got here. So I'll see if this builds up a little bit. I can tell it's a little bit dark for my neck. So it's looking a little bit darker than my body, but I'll probably be wearing a jumper today. So it's not, not that big a deal, but golden is probably a little bit dark for me despite having it color matched picking up a little bit more just to see if this layers in those areas it seems to layer quite nicely it's not picking up on itself it is yeah definitely a more dewier foundation so i don't think you'll lay it too too well it doesn't seem like it sets a lot but that looks quite it's almost like you can't tell what it looks like because it's so shiny look how shiny that is Anyway, let's do this side with a brush. Um, the sponge did apply it very nicely. I did use quite a lot of it though. There's a little bit left over, but I did use quite a lot of it. All right, I've just got a Sigma flat Kabuki brush and I'm just picking some up and putting that on. This does apply nicely with a brush or a sponge that doesn't seem to be crazy patchiness or streakiness. constantly having to adjust the brightness on the camera because it's uh, the sun's sort of coming out but it's a super rainy day so it's sort of going in and out and going crazy but that's a light layer it looks again very very shiny but has covered a lot of my redness so so this is a good foundation for just evening out skin tone but when it comes to little blemishes um, like I've got a couple here I think you do need to build it up or probably what's better if you don't want a thick layer of this sort of quite creamy consistency is just to use some concealer but I do like the amount of coverage it's giving with a thin coat because I don't look splotchy and red I do maybe look a little bit more tanned than my neck so I'll have to bronze my neck a little bit um, but it's evened out my skin tone really nicely but it is so so shiny this is the sort of dewy foundation that doesn't tend to wear well on oily skin um, because it sort of slips off throughout the day. It looks nice and shiny. I'm sure people that have dry skin are looking at this and salivating at the glow. Um, for me, I'm going to have to do a bit of powdering. Uh, I'm just going to put a tiny bit more on, like I've just taken a tiny bit. So the good thing about this tube, you can take the smallest amount out. So you can be quite precise with it and not waste too much. I find when you use pump um, bottles, sort of dispenses quite a lot and even if you didn't want to dispense too much often you sort of use it anyway and apply too much or waste some so I'm just building it up in this area just to sort of match there I'm noticing that this looks a little bit darker and I think it's just because I built it up a bit so I'm just sort of layering this a tiny bit but really there's no major difference between the brush side and the sponge side I think they both look really nice and they don't look streaky I think the main difference is the 
sponge side builds better. So if you did want to build up a thicker layer, I think the sponge builds a bit better than the brush, but I think they both look quite nice. I'll zoom in. All right, so zoomed in, it is super, super, super dewy. And again, I don't even know if you can see what the skin looks like that much because the shine is so distracting. At least I find it is anyway. Um, you can definitely see skin texture, but that's just because it's catching the light. So you can see all my little pores and stuff, but that's almost like it's been highlighted. So what I'm going to do is uh, put a bit of concealer powder this and then we'll zoom in again. And to keep this consistent with my last foundation review, I'm using my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer um, on the sponge again. And I'm going to use the same powder just so I can sort of compare uh, using the same products. So I've just got a bit on the tip of my sponge there and I'm going to sing the praises of this concealer again um i love this concealer because it goes with like it's a matte mousse but it does work really nicely with super dewy balmy foundations um it works with powder foundations it works with really matte high coverage foundations sort of just blends nicely with everything there's no clashing there's no lifting there's no peeling i just feel like it's a really nice concealer and you can apply a really nice thin layer so it sort of brightens and adds a bit of sort of um, coverage, obviously, but without being too heavy on the skin, which is nice. So I'm just going to look. The nature of these lighter coverage foundations is a lot sort of peeks through, but little layer of concealer fixes that. And because I used the MAC Patrick's powder in the last video, I'll do the same with this video. Um, they do have a translucent version of this in the permanent range, but this sort of slightly pinky, fleshy toned one was a limited edition for Patrick Star collection. Um, but it's a nice sort of translucent powder. So I mainly used this powder in the last video because it is so light and you can apply a very small layer, a very thin layer, but also um, it doesn't change the color of the base. So there's no real coverage to it. So that's why I used it, but it is, limited edition and no longer available so it's a bit annoying i am using more powder than i used in my last video of course the brightness is up again Ugh. um just because this is a much dewier foundation and again it's just going to slip off my face so to make this sort of foundation work on my oily skin i do have to go in with a bit more powder all right that feels a lot more normal to me and looks a lot more normal I can feel a lot of hydration still in my skin. So it is, especially around the sides where I didn't powder much, um, it is a little bit tacky and, and quite dewy feeling, um, but it has settled down. It's not looking so shiny on me, which I, I don't like that look. It's just, if you've got dry skin and your skin absorbs that and takes that on and makes it look quite radiant, then that's great. For me, my skin actually like pushes that away and the oils like push that away and it slides off my face and it's really messy and it's gross. You'll see the oils coming through soon enough. I feel like they'll come through fairly quickly with this foundation. Um, so I need to powder it. And this just feels a lot more secure to me. It does feel like there's still a lot of moisture there. Now that it's powdered, I can see some more redness here and those blemishes haven't been covered that well. On a daily basis, this is the amount of coverage that I like. I want something to even out my skin tone, to not look splotchy and red, to sort of make it look like I'm one with my body. I don't mind if there's any little blemishes or any little little imperfections peeking through. Now the sun's going. Um, so I like this for a daily basis, but I do think it's possibly a little bit too balmy for my skin, but we'll see. All right, I'm back with the rest of my makeup done and half dried hair. It's probably gonna get bigger and bigger as the day gets on. Um, I don't mind this. I think with makeup, it looks quite good. I might turn that brightness up a little bit. It hasn't covered this sort of breakout and I can still see a little bit of flush in my cheeks, but um, I think on a daily basis, that's totally fine. Um, I am wearing more makeup than I normally wear during the day because I'm planning on filming after this. Um, so usually I think with a more pared down makeup look, I think this base is really nice. It does feel like I'm wearing a base. As I touch it, it feels a bit tacky. So there's definitely a lot of hydration in there and it hasn't set. So if I left it without powdering, it would not set on its own because I can feel down here where I sort of extended it a little bit without powdering down there it is tacky so this is definitely a hydrating sort of dewy feeling foundation which again I think on a daily basis for me is okay 
but I wouldn't feel comfortable sort of going out with this. I'm a bit worried that at any moment it will slide off my face, but it does look nice. It looks quite natural. It definitely feels like I'm wearing foundation on my skin though. Um, I can feel like I've got a layer of like a hydrating mask or something like it feels like I've got something on my face. So I, I think it's a little bit too dewy for me, but um, it's fine. In terms of the claims of this foundation, uh, look, yes, the main claims are that it's like a skin, skincare based foundation. I can feel that it's very hydrating. So I definitely think the 24 hours hydration if you're gonna wear it for 24 hours, I'm sure it's gonna add some hydration for 24 hours because it's like a it's like a foundation balm, like a cream balm product. In terms of the instantly plumping, I don't personally see it, but I, I think if you did have dry skin, since this is so balmy and so shiny, I think it would look like it's sort of plumping the skin a little bit if your skin was lacking moisture and hydration, which my skin isn't. So my at the moment it's just sitting on my skin going, it's not going anywhere because we don't need you right now. The medium buildable coverage claim, I, I, in my opinion, I would call this light buildable coverage because I feel like one layer is quite sheer and you can see a bit underneath, like it does cover a bit of like even out skin tone a little bit, but you can definitely still see things popping through. And I also, I'm just changing the light, the light is going crazy. I also feel like that medium is like probably the maximum you can build to because you're building a cream on like a really shiny cream on top of a shiny cream and it, it without it setting, like a layer setting and then applying another layer, um, you really can't build it up that much. So I don't feel like it can build to too much more than what I've got on now. And I think it's just a smarter idea to put a thin layer on and conceal in the areas you need to. Otherwise it can feel really sort of thick on the skin and quite, yeah, balmy. It can feel quite balmy. Anyway, I'll check in in a few hours time and let you know how this is wearing. All right, so it is now after two o'clock. So I've had this on for five hours and it's all right i think once it sort of is on and you sort of get used to the sort of tacky feeling and that sort of moisturized balminess um it sort of doesn't really get much worse i've just turned off the heating it's been a miserable day so i have been in like a warm climate i guess um so this Look, it's starting to look shiny, but around my nose, I can definitely see like a little pool of oil on my chin. It's getting quite shiny. So the oils are starting to come through. So it's definitely not an oil control foundation, but it never claims to be. Um, but at this point in time, I still think it looks quite nice, even with a shiny chin. Um, again, that could be easily blotted away. It's not breaking down. What I hate about foundations is when the oils break through and it actually breaks down the foundation to a point that you have patchiness or no foundation left. I think because I have redness in my skin, when the foundation does lift, you can see redness underneath and it makes my skin look really patchy. So I actually really hate it when foundation wears off or breaks down. If it's a little bit greasy, it's not the end of the world, as long as it's still on my face. So right now I think it's fine. I think. It was a bit of an adjustment getting used to that balmy feel, but once I did that, it sort of feels the same. All right, so it is 6.18. So I've had this on for just over nine hours. I think this uh, foundation looks better in person than it currently does on camera. I feel like this area looks really yellow. My nose looks really red because the redness is starting to come through. Um, in person, it looks fairly even, maybe a little bit of a red nose, but um, I think it's just the lighting. Uh, I feel like this, look, the nose has worn off almost entirely, actually. Like the nose area has entirely worn off. Um, the chin area is a little bit greasy, but there's still some foundation on it. So I feel like it feels the same. It's not transferring. It actually feels more set than it did previously, which is weird. I'm not going to touch the middle part of my face because I know that that is oil oil town. Um, look, I'm going to say this is holding up better than I expected. Um, what I could easily do is just powder my nose, powder my chin with a powder with a little bit of coverage, 
to bring it all looking back to normal it would not be hard to save at all I thought this was gonna be a foundation that at this point if I like touched my face it would just like slide off but it's not so this is holding up a lot better than I expected I feel like this is a nice everyday foundation so far for me um, at the nine hour mark I sort of start winding down anyway you know we're sort of nearly prepared dinner we're planning a bath we're doing all that kind of stuff so I I don't need to look great so I feel like for me in my life this is this is fine and it is a very hydrating foundation so I feel like if that's what you're after and you've got dry skin um, or you want that sort of plumping quality I feel like this 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 isn't this isn't too bad all right it is over 12 hours wear so we've made it guys um I don't feel like it's changed much much at all since the last check-in uh it's sort of off the nose off the chin still looking uh, look it's it's looking all right um i think this foundation has surprised me a little bit i sort of thought from the balmy texture it would have just slid off my face throughout the day um and it only only happened in like my oiliest areas and i really don't think this looks that bad i think it's sort of worn down in a more of a natural way so even though it is off certain areas it doesn't look like there's a distinct like line between foundation and where it's off um so i think it's fine i think this is a nice everyday foundation um i think if you've got sort of drier skin and you want hydration all day or the skincare sort of um elements to this really speaks to you i think this is actually not a bad foundation i will continue wearing it on a daily basis because just every day this is this is fine. How it's worn off is not unpleasant. It doesn't feel tacky. It doesn't feel like it's transferring everywhere. Um, my toddler's like been up in my face as I was getting him to sleep and he had feet all over my face. So it's it's been fine. Like it's actually survived quite a lot. Um, I think the only reason why this wouldn't become like my staple everyday foundation is because that balmy feel at the start just feels a little bit heavy on my oily skin. Um, I think I much prefer something like the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk that feels a lot more lightweight on the skin, um, but it has some luminosity to it. This definitely has a sort of balmy, greasy element that I need to set quite a lot for my skin anyway. Um, so yeah, it's not going to become my everyday staple, but I think it's actually worn a lot better than I thought it would. And I'm happily going to use it up and keep using it and maybe i'll fall in love with it maybe the skincare sort of benefits long term will make some really great differences to my skin i don't know if that is the case and i use it up i'll definitely report in my empties if I, it's something i want to repurchase or not but i think for the price point look max factor are a little bit pricier in australia but um like i said you can always find it on sale and for under 20 bucks which is what it's on sale for at big w at the moment I think it's a it's a nice hydrating foundation and I'm surprised it is lasting this well on my skin. So good on it. So that's it. I'm taking my makeup off. I want to get into my BJs. I will see you in the next one and let me know if you've tried this foundation, what you think about it um, and let me know what your skin type is because I feel like people with drier skin types are going to be loving this foundation. I think it's, it's, it's made for them. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.